I'm Darren at Desai, your SolidWorks guy. It's time to go on a SolidWorks deep dive. In today's SOLIDWORKS Deep Dive, we're going to get into the intricacies of the thread feature. Now this was added in SOLIDWORKS 2016, some really great enhancements added to SOLIDWORKS 2017. Now to really get the most out of the thread feature, um, you should know a couple of other areas of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, first of all, they're based on sketches, and if you're making anything in SOLIDWORKS, you're using sketches. But configurations are also another tool that's useful, um, because we're usually dealing with things that are similar but different, and configurations are the best way to capture those in a single part file. And then lastly, these are saved off as what's called a library feature part. Um, they're useful in the design library and very similar to a weldment profile. So let's get into it and show you how this feature works. The first thing we want to do is verify where your current thread profile library is located. You can find that under Tools and Options, under System Options, down to File Locations, and simply choose from the list Thread Profiles. This will tell you exactly where your thread profile library is located. Now to create a thread profile from scratch, all you're going to do is sketch. So here we'll select the front plane and we'll start sketching. I want to make sure my profile is going to actually be symmetric. So here we'll just draw up a couple of lines, making sure they're vertical, line at an angle, vertical, and then back to home. SOLIDWORKS 2017 will show you our shaded sketch profiles. I'm going to add two other center lines to this. The first center line I'm going to draw between the midpoints of the two vertical edges. That will enable me to very quickly take that line and make it horizontal, effectively making this entire sketch symmetric. The second center line is going to originate from the origin. We're just going to draw this one vertical. This controls the pitch offset for the thread profile. We don't use a helix like we do in a traditional sweep. Now I'm going to dimension this feature. These are the dimensions that will be accessible during our configuration creation. Dimension the pitch. Dimension the angle. And then we'll dimension the pitch. Now we're going to need to save this off as a library feature part. Two ways to do this. First, pre-select the entities you'd like to be part of the library. And then when you say File, Save As, Instead of saving this as the part file that it currently is, we're going to change that to Library Feature Part. And we'll go ahead and navigate to the folder location that we saw in our Tools, Options, and Thread Profiles. We're going to call this one Thread Darren. Now by pre-selecting the Library Feature Sketch, you'll notice that it's been converted over to a sketch icon with the Library L next to it. And the part itself has been saved off as a different type of a part file. In this case, it looks like a stack of library books, and that indicates library feature part. This will now be usable when we create our threads. Now I want to take a look at the threads that come with SOLIDWORKS side by side with my custom version here. So here what we see is the metric tap. Now there's also a corresponding metric die. But the key to really get the most out of these is that they're created by using configurations. Now notice if I change from the 1.2.25 up to the M10 by 1.25 that we clearly have a size definition change for that feature. I'll do the corresponding over in my custom feature. Now by looking at these side by side, they're identical, but what I want to show you is how to change a feature in the configuration and then have the pitch modified as a result. So here inside of this part here with my custom version, let's just edit the sketch. And my pitch definition here is a current 1.25. Now I'm going to change that dimension, but the key to configurations is making sure that you change it only for this configuration. That way that dimension can be unique for each and every size. I'm going to update this pitch a little bit and let's just make it very emphasized by making it three millimeters. And you'll notice now that that line is much, much longer. Here in our milk jug, we're going to go ahead and take advantage of the thread profiles we've just created. The thread tool is a feature like every other. And to insert it in SOLIDWORKS 2017, we simply pick a circular edge of a cylindrical face. Your preview will start immediately. Now we're going to take a look at the two different sizes here. Here's my metric tap, which is the original SOLIDWORKS feature. If you notice on screen the size and preview that we're going to get. 
Now in this case, I'm set to currently cut the thread and I clearly want to add the thread to the outside of this part. So let's switch that over to extrude. The size of this also is a little bit small. Let's bump that up to the M10 by 1.25. Now some of the other settings that are available here in SOLIDWORKS 2017 um, have to do with the way that this feature is created when it comes to multi-start. Now if you notice the original feature here has a fairly modest pitch. We're going to switch this now over to the metric tap that I've created. And you'll notice that the pitch is much more significant based on the length of the center line. Now this is useful when we're creating things like multi-start threads. This will allow us to pattern the thread interior and have individual start points for two different nested threads. Now a couple of other features that were added to SOLIDWORKS 2017 that really make this feature very pleasant to use is a very simple ability to go ahead and modify things like the number of revolutions. I'll just make that two. And then let's also go ahead and offset that up above that top face. Our offset enables us to begin this in a different position than the actual selected edge. Now I like to start these above that edge and I might even emphasize that by bumping that up there just a little bit further. New to SOLIDWORKS 2017 is this fantastic option called Trim with Start Face. By selecting that, there's no need to come back and do an extra step to make sure that that top thread is a clean transition. Top Face will simply trip it automatically. We say OK to that feature. And there we have a very nice looking thread on the top of our milk jug. As I mentioned before, there's two different thread profiles that actually appear within that folder. When you start a thread, you've got the option to select a tap version and a die version of each size. Now the difference between the two is significant and they're really meant to nest to each other. But what's also the difference is whether you're adding a thread to the exterior of an existing shaft or cutting a thread to the interior of an existing hole. Because of course at the time of modeling you have the choice of cutting into this shaft or adding geometry to it where in real life in manufacturing you wouldn't have that choice so what we have here is an example of those two thread profiles used in conjunction with each other now in order to verify this what i've done is taken this body and simply copied it over top of the shaft and here with our section view you'll easily be able to see that those two threads marry up beautifully these are two parts that could be 3d printed immediately taken off of the printer cleaned up and threaded right together. Any sketch profile saved as a library feature can be used as a thread profile. Here in our feed screw, we're gonna go ahead and use one that we've created for conveyance of materials. So as I select the edge of our part, we can see very clearly that that feed screw is being left in. We're actually gonna do this one up to an end face and reference the geometry itself. Now other modifications that can be done here have to do with the positioning of the sketch relative to the geometry in the sketch. And there you see the center line in conjunction with the selected edge. Here we have the capability to modify the diameters and override some of the values that may have been placed in the original library feature. Again, we're gonna add geometry, so we'll make sure that we hit extrude and we'll simply accept that feature. So there you have it. Now I'm not saying to use this feature on every single part that you've got that requires threads. Um, fasteners, tapped holes, we're still gonna Go ahead and keep our performance up by eliminating those extra features. But when you want to 3D print a part, of course, the feature has to be modeled in order for it to print. So use it where necessary, but definitely use this tool. Until next time, I'm Darren at Desai, your SOLIDWORKS guy.